In this lesson, we'll continue our discussion of muscle tissue by taking a look at the anatomy of a skeletal muscle cell. We can also call the skeletal muscle cell a skeletal muscle fiber. Right? It's the same thing. Now, compared to other cells in our body, you know, think of maybe about a red blood cell or a cheek cell in your epithelium, our skeletal muscle cells are quite large in comparison. Right? These are enormous compared to other cells. Since these muscle cells are so large, one nucleus within the cell is not enough to control that cell, to regulate that cell. So as a result, a skeletal muscle cell is going to have hundreds of nuclei. And we call that multinucleated. And we'll talk more about that in a moment. Now, our skeletal muscle cells form uh, embryologically as individual cells that we call myoblasts. And the myoblasts, as they start to mature, they start to fuse together to eventually become an adult muscle fiber right here that's a long cylinder. So all these myoblasts have fused together to form one long cell. Okay, um, this here, this connective tissue here, if you remember from a previous lesson, it would be the endomycium. This is the connective tissue that's around the muscle cell. How do I know that the endomycium contain the myosatellite cell? All right, so we call these cells that form our muscle fibers the myoblasts. The last comment here is that we can also call our muscle fibers striated muscle. The reason for that is this. When you look at a muscle cell, you see banding, right? Dark, light, dark, light, right? All these bands right here. Um, we'll talk about why they're there in a subsequent lesson. Those are known as striations, right? So that's all of those stripes that are um, running up and down. All right, here's a blow up. So we just took that picture, blew it up a little bit so you can see all these striations. Areas again of dark, light, dark, light, dark, light, all that. And then the nuclei, notice these are these bumps right out here. They are more than one of them and they're also located on the edge of the cell, near the cell membrane. Right? Normally in a normal cell, the nucleus would be down here in the middle somewhere. Well, these proteins that cause muscle contraction actually pull the nu push the nucleus out to the edge. Yeah, so these are the striations, these are the nuclei. Here's what it looks like under the microscope. Notice you don't even have to magnify it that much, right? This is still low power. And you can see the stripes here. These are the striations. And then the darker areas would be the nuclei. And again, you can see the fibers are these long cylinders like that. So let's take a look at the anatomy of the muscle cell or the muscle fiber. Right? You'll see the parts are the same as a regular cell. In many instances, there are some unique things. But we change the names of some of the parts that we do know. For instance, the cell membrane of a muscle fiber, we're going to call the sarcolemma. Right? So that's nothing more than the cell membrane. But this is a special type of cell membrane in that it can transmit electrical impulses very similar to a nerve impulse. Um, the way a nerve will transmit a nerve impulse, the muscle sarcolemma can do it also. We call these electrical impulses action potentials. Right, So that's the word we're going to use for the rest of the semester or the rest of the course. It's just an electrical impulse, but the sarcolemma can transmit it. Now. The cytoplasm of the muscle fiber, we're just going to call sarcoplasm. So we're just trying to, kind of changing the name from cyto to sarco. And sarco means flesh, believe it or not. So it's kind of the, 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 the fleshy part of, a, of a, an animal, I guess. Right, so sarco means flesh. So here's a picture. Here's the muscle fiber. Again, we can see the striations. We can see the nuclei. Again, notice they're on the periphery. And um, the sarcolemma would be the cell membrane here, right? we have it labeled for you. And then the sarcoplasm would be all of the cytoplasm in here. And we'll talk about all these structures uh, in a little bit. Now, one of the things about the skeletal muscle fiber is that the electrical impulse, the action potential, will travel along the sarcolemma. And um, watch this. Here's the sarcolemma here. 
These red dots represent proteins in the muscle that cause the muscle fiber to contract. If the electrical impulse only traveled along the sarcolemma here on the edge, only these protein fibers would be stimulated to contract. We need all these protein fibers to contract. So what has to happen is we need to get away to get that electrical impulse into the middle of the cell, not just on the edge. So the next structure we're going to show you is this. Let's just say the um, electrical impulse, the action potential, is traveling here along the sarcolemma, the cell membrane. Now, in order to get into the middle of the cell, it's going to enter this tube right here. And now the electrical impulse will come to the middle of the cell so that these proteins here, these lines right here, represent proteins. I'll describe them later all of these little dots right here, they now have been um, stimulated by the electrical impulse. So not only the proteins on the edge out here are going to contract, but the proteins in the center also. So these tubes, these little entrances right here, the little hole, that little hole, brings the electrical impulse into this, these yellow tubes that go down. Here's another one. They've just been cut right over here, but they go down. These are called the transverse tubules or the T-tubules. And these are tubes, again, they extend from the surface of the muscle fiber deep into the sarcoplasm. And this way we can get that electrical impulse to the middle of the cell. So the proteins in the middle of the cell are stimulated to contract. Okay which we're going to get into. All right, so these transmit the action potentials from the sarcolemma into the cell interior. And then again, that action potential is going to cause the actual contraction. So you can call these transverse tubules or T-tubules. Again, it will be all these yellow tubes coming down, and they're sending the electrical impulse right into the middle of the cell. And here it is. It's just cut right here. Cut, cut. It would be continuous here. Now, <clears throat> there's another structure uh, very similar to the endoplasmic reticulum that we looked at when we looked at a regular cell, very similar to the smooth ER. This is a tubular network that surrounds, surrounds each myofibril. All right, so let's define that for a minute. So we saw before, just to review, sarcolemma, that's the cell membrane. The sarcoplasm would be like all the cytoplasm, let's say out over here, all of this would be the sarcoplasm. And then these are the organelles that are embedded. We saw the T-tubule. Now, these bundles of proteins, this round circle here, like here's a round one too, it's just been cut. All these lines represent proteins, but each one of these bundles of circles represents a myofibril. Right here, one has been pulled out, and we could see it labeled right over here. Around these myofibrils, these blue tubes, this network of tubes right here that surrounds the myofibril, this is known as the sarcoplasmic reticulum. This is what I had said before, is very similar to the endoplasmic reticulum, the smooth ER in a regular cell. So these sarcoplasmic reticulums, they are a tubular network. They surround each myofibril. Again, the myofibril is that little bundle of proteins. Now, let's take it a step further. If you notice, let's take this smooth, uh, I'm sorry, let's take this sarcoplasmic reticulum right here. Notice that the sarcoplasmic reticulum is on either side of the T-tubule right over here. And if you notice, right next to the T-tubule, it's a little bit more, the sarcoplasmic reticulum is a little bit more swollen. Right? See how it's a little bit swollen right there? Swollen over here. We can see it on this side too. Nice swelling right there. That's swelling right there. We call that swelling, that part of the sarcoplasmic reticulum, the terminal cisterna. Right? So they have it labeled up over here, but all of these would be terminal cisterna, all that swollen part. So let's go back to that. So they form these, uh, the sarcoplasmic reticulum has these chambers known as the terminal cisterna. And again, notice those terminal cisterna are right up against the T-tubules. Okay, so here's the T-tubule, this yellow, right there. Terminal cisterna here of the SR, the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Terminal cisterna here. 
Now, this relationship of the two terminal cisterna with the T-tubule in the middle, this is known as a triad, right? Tri meaning three. And it kind of reminds me of an Oreo cookie, right? If you had the, the dark cookie here of the Oreo cookie, and then here's the other cookie right there, and then the cream would be in the middle. But it's kind of like that. The terminal cisterna form like a sandwich uh, uh, with the T-tubule in the middle. So they have it labeled over here, but this would be the triad. Okay? One terminal cisterna here, one terminal cisterna here, T-tubule in the center. Right? That relationship is going to become important, um, we'll see in a subsequent, uh, subsequent lesson. I just want to uh, define everything today and locate them. So the two terminal cisternae plus one T-tubule, that forms a triad. And like I said, very similar to like an Oreo cookie. So what does the SR do for us? It does something very important it actually stores an ion known as calcium. We're going to see that calcium is extremely important to muscle contraction, right? extremely important. Okay, so let's review. Sarcolemma is the cell membrane. The cytoplasm, let's we'll label that out over here. This is the cytoplasm right over here. We're going to call that the sarcoplasm. And these are the organelles that are embedded in it. Then we have bringing the electrical impulse from the sarcolemma into the middle of the cell. These are the T-tubules. Right? They're going to now allow the electrical impulse to stimulate these muscle fibers here. Uh, excuse me, these myofibrils. I apologize, these myofibrils. These are the little circles here. These are the bundles of the proteins. These little red dots are the proteins. Okay, um, and then we had the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Right, these are these blue tubes here. These store calcium. The swelling of the SR, the sarcoplasmic reticulum, is called a terminal cisternae. Then there's another terminal cisternae, sandwiching a T tubule. That right there is known as a triad, and we're going to see in a future lesson that relationship is very important. Okay, let's just go back a minute, make sure we have everything. All right, so the SR, like I said, is a tubular network. It's similar to the smooth ER. We know the chambers are called the terminal cisternae. They're up against the T-tubules, just like an Oreo cookie. We call that relationship a triad. And then we also want you to know right now is that the sarcoplasmic reticulum, its function is to store calcium. All right, here's just a blow up of the same thing. Again, sarcolemma, T tubules. Then this would be the myofibril, right? This is with the bundle of proteins. I'm going to discuss that. Then surrounding the myofibril, the blue tubes are the SR, right? The sarcoplasmic reticulum. The swelling of the sarcoplasmic reticulum, terminal cisternae. Right, here's another one. And the two terminal cisternae abut the T tubule. And we call this area a triad. So let's uh, introduce this myofibril for a minute as far as what's in it. So the myofibrils, they're just lengthwise subdivisions of the muscle fiber. But watch this they are responsible for the muscle contraction. Why is that? They contain the protein filaments that cause muscle contraction. We call these protein filaments myofilaments. Right? So the myofilaments are within the myofibrils. Right? Sometimes students get confused with these terms because they sound the same, right? but it's different. The myofibril is the bundle of the myofilaments. I'll go over this in a minute. Let me go back a second. Actually, let me go let me go to that big one here. So again, this is the myofibril. The red dots are the myofilaments now. But look at this. We cut into the myofibril here, and you can see there's two types of myofilaments. The blue line here is what we're going to call a thick filament, and the red line is going to be called the thin filament. 
Okay, so there's two types of myofilaments, the thin filament, and I want you to know for now, this is made up of a protein called actin. On the next lesson, um, we'll take a look at what it looks like in the thin filament. The thick filament is made up of a different protein. This one you're going to call myosin. So again, within the myofibril, the circle area, there are myofilaments. The thick myofilament here, the blue one, is myosin. All these red lines here, they represent the thin myofilament and they're made up of actin. Okay, so we have thin filaments, thick filaments, right? They are the myofilaments and again the myofilaments make up the myofibrils. Right, same, same picture, just um, blown up. Okay, so here is a just kind of a variation of this. We took uh, one of the myofibrils here, and then they just kind of pulled it out. And again, you can see up close and personal now, thick filaments, and then the red ones. All these red lines here are the thin filaments. And again, these filaments here are going to cause the actual muscle contraction, which I'm going to describe in the next lesson.